Okay. Show me. Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dutch Easy Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for part 2 or video 2 about this here aeroplane from Dytone, the Ripper R690. Dytone's very first aeroplane. Or maybe if you are uh, only into airplanes, this might be uh, your first encounter with the brand Dytone. So Dytone is uh, all about quadcopters, but here is their first plane and it's a flying wing. So in this second part we're going to be building this plane. Again, it comes as a frame kit and you'll have to supply your electronics yourself and you'll have to build it yourself. Not complicated a wing, it's a foam wing, right? And it mostly goes together with glue, but there's some electronics involved so you will have to uh, configure and install those. So this here video is aimed at people that uh, might have flown air multirotors so far, maybe Dytone multirotors or any brands, and want to get their feet into the, the fixed wing flying. And, uh, or maybe people that have flown airplanes but never uh, a uh, flying wing, or have never built an airplane, only flown uh, ready to fly. So I do assume some knowledge of RC, so what is a receiver, a LiPo, an ESC and such, and what does a servo do. Other than that, I'll be leading you through this build. I'll give you some pointers on uh, what to do and what not to do. Again, uh, mostly uh, for people that have never built an airplane. There are some catches in building an airplane. So what do we actually start with? Not with the airplane. You might be tempted to glue on the wings straight away. See those aren't glued in yet. But no, you want to start with the electronics for your aeroplane. See, uh, one of the reasons for this is that uh, if you don't set up the servos first, if you glue in the wings, you can't actually install the servos easily anymore. It'll be a hassle. So again, it'll be far easier to, to set up your electronics first. And uh, let me see, where will we start? Well, actually, let's start with the radio. Let's uh, make a model for your airplane and set that up. Pretty straightforward actually, but let's have a look at uh, what's involved. Alright guys, this here is my radio of choice for aeroplanes. Hopefully you'll be able to see the screen actually. Okay, so one important distinction here before we begin is whether you want to add a flight controller to your airplane or not. I won't be using a flight controller, so I'll be flying the airplane fully manual and if you want to install a flight controller in your airplane to, well, control the airplane. Uh, the setup in your radio will be very, very straightforward. You'll basically have to set up a four channel airplane with aileron, one aileron channel, an elevator, then throttle, rudder, and probably one or two switches for modes and arming and such. Two aux channels. So six channels in all. I, on the other hand, will be doing the mixing in my radio. So my radio will have to control uh, the, the up and down movement and the side to side movement of my airplane. So the mixing of the elevators and ailerons into elevons. All right, so let's actually see that I have done so in the servo monitor of my radio. Hopefully it'll be visible, but if I move my ailerons, both channel one and channel 2 have a deflection. Also, if I move my elevator, channel 1 and 2 will have a deflection. If I move my throttle, one channel, channel 3 will have a deflection. And uh, yeah, this plane doesn't have a rudder, but ordinarily this is what my rudder would do. I could opt to mix that into my ailerons. I usually don't, uh, but you could. That way uh, this stick does something, right? Or maybe you could set up uh, your FEV camera to swivel around on this stick. That might be a, a nice option. I won't, probably. The airplane doesn't suit uh, that uh, kind of setup, but uh, you could, could make, that, uh, make that happen. Other than that, pretty simple, right? And um, I have set up some exponential. I've set up 35% exponential on elevator and aileron. I would advise you to do the same if you are not running a flight controller. If you are running a flight controller, set up the exponential in your flight controller. If you're like me, flying the airplane uh, manually, set up some exponential, especially for the first flight. Or maybe mainly for the first flight and see what, uh, what you need after that. But 
I'd say set up some uh, exponential. And that is basically it for the radio part. Obviously uh, you could have a different radio. Hopefully you know your own radio, <laughs> right? And uh, if you want to set up uh, your radio for manual flight, do uh, add some mixing for Elevon uh, mixing, right? Okay, and that is uh, it. Uh, yeah, okay, so next. Motors and ESCs. Um, I will be using uh, this here Hobbywing ESC. It is a 40 amp ESC with a BEC, a battery eliminator circuit, or basically a 5 volt output. And uh, you will need that uh, for, uh, for instance, uh, your receiver and your servos. So this is an, what you'd say an all-in-one ESC, usually uh, flown in the airplanes, these. Right, and uh, this is on a, a different option. This is a, a separate ESC, and you could use that, but you'd have to use uh, or add a separate BEC for, your, again, your 5 volt uh, needs. And uh, here is a motor. The motor, the motor I have here, doesn't have uh, booted connectors yet. As you can tell, I'll be adding those. See, this ESC I have here has, what are these, three and a half in, uh, millimeter bullet connectors. So again, I'll be uh, soldering up some bullet connectors to, to my motor. I don't have to, I could solder these wires directly to the ESC, but in airplane land, it is usually uh, done with bullet connectors so that you can easily swap out electronics, for instance. Upgrade them, change them, replace them, etc. And what more can I tell you? Um, oh yeah, uh, this uh, ESC here has a Deans connector. I've had this ESC for a while, uh, as in a, dec a decade. Nah, not that long probably. But I used to fly all my airplanes with Deans connectors. I'll be uh, replacing this connector with an XT60. So in, uh, in a minute, if you see this ESC again in the airplane, it'll probably have an XT60. Yeah, again, so that are two things I'll be doing. I'll replace this connector over here and I'll add some bullet uh, connectors to my uh, motor. If you were to use a, an ESC like this, I would probably also add some bullet connectors to this uh, ESC. Again, in airplanes it's very, it's very convenient to do so, but you don't have to. It'll work by just soldering up uh, the motor wires to this ESC, of course. That'll work. And uh, what's next? Oh yeah, I also have a receiver here. Uh, obviously you will need uh, a receiver. A 4 channel? Yeah, if you are uh, not running a uh, flight controller like I am, uh, you'll only need like 3 channels. 3 channels? Yeah. And I will that way have a separate channel, if you will, or a 5 volt output here to maybe power my FEV setup. I could run my FEV setup like that. Possible, right? Then let's move on to the servos. Two servos, and I've laid them down so that they uh, are in mirror image of each other. On both servos, the spline is uh, on the top of your image. So again, put the servos down so that they are a mirror image of each other. It doesn't matter which is which at this point. And at this point, I have uh, connected up uh, one servo to channel one on my receiver and the other one on channel two on my receiver. And again, at this point, it does not matter which is which. I just want to make sure that we install the servo arms correctly. And most servos will come with a couple of uh, servo arms, maybe uh, some single arm servos and uh, dual armed uh, like these and uh, different kinds. And um, you will be using these with a single arm or a single lever. If you don't have enough, maybe you've uh, crashed your airplanes a couple of times and you uh, have uh, only uh, one of uh, these and one of these, you can simply clip off one of the legs of uh, an arm like this. And that way you'll have the same servo arm as this one over here, right? Hopefully that'll actually let me show you why not. I will simply clip off one of the arms of this one, of this lever, and as you can tell, I have now two identical levers. Yay! Okay, at this point, we're gonna switch on our radio. Make sure that you've not set up any kind of trim on your radio, so both 
channels should be at zero at this point. Then also power up your ESC with the receiver connected. And now your servos should move if you uh, move your uh, Aeron stick. Okay, so both servos should now be centered. Then we're gonna put the servo arms on both of the servos and try to get both of them as close to 90 degrees opposed to the servo or they should be uh, pointing straight up both of these servo arms. And again, try to keep them as close to 90 degrees opposed to the servo or straight up. And I must say I must be lucky here but both of them are exactly straight up. And now you can actually see that they move. This is my aileron movement and this is my elevator movement. Later on when we have the servos installed in the wing we'll check whether the mixing is actually correct. Right now I simply want to make sure that the servo arms are installed correctly. And yeah that's it. See uh, it's, uh, it's harder, it's not impossible, but it's harder to get these servos arms installed once the servos are actually in the wing. So that's why we are now, uh, well actually that's, a, that's the reason why we are started with the electronics. Then the servos uh, should also come with some screws and uh, usually a couple of identical screws like these. The metallic colored ones and then uh, one other screw and you'll be wondering what is what. Well usually the screws that come in pairs are to mount your servo and the other one is to mount that servo arm to the servo. Right so it'll screw in, well you see uh, where it screws in. Um, yeah power down your servos before you do so otherwise you'll, you might burn up the servos by your, uh, your hand torquing the screw. Okay, so that's basically the first step and we've got our electronics mostly set up for now. Then it's time to do a little bit of prep work on our fuselage and the wing parts. Uh, not a whole lot, but we will be gluing on the wings to the fuselage and these wing tips to the wings themselves. And for the, the glue to stick well to these surfaces, you do want to prep them a little bit. I've used a kitchen um, abrasive uh, sponge to lightly score the surfaces which we will be gluing on. You can use um, a light sandpaper for instance and you don't have to go to work on it. And especially in this plane it's easy to see whether you've done a good job. See this foam, I'm not sure if it'll show up on camera but it's a little bit shiny, it's a little bit glossy. You want that to go away basically. So lightly sand the in inside over here and obviously the inside of the wing over here <coughs> and also the wing tip over here and the inside of the wing tip. Those are all the gluing surfaces, right? So lightly score those and you will see that they will go dull, that they'll lose that shine. And by that you will have removed uh, any mold release and the glue will have a better chance of uh, sticking to uh, that surface. Speaking of, I'll be using Yuhu Pour, but I could just as well have used uh, hot glue for instance. There are uh, contact adhesive CA glues that you can use. Be mindful that you use any glue that's foam safe. Makes sense, right? Some glues will burn into uh, the foam, which is not what you want. So choose a any kind of foam safe glue. There is a specific foam safe CA for instance. And uh, yeah, I guess foam safe is the lightest type of, uh, of glue. Uh, not that important in this wing probably, but um, if you are building a lightweight airplane you might uh, want to consider that. Again, I'll be using Yuhu Pour. Definitely don't go to town with your glue. Uh, the glue shouldn't pour out. So a very thin layer of whichever glue you'd use. And the last bit of prep work you want to do on your airframe is wiggle around the elevons a little bit. They might be a little bit stiff. I must say that uh, with this airplane they weren't. But if you are building uh, another plane you might want to check if the, this hinge isn't stiff. 
and once the servo is installed that's uh, that's harder so do that at this point point. and again with this plane it wasn't really all that needed but check it out anyway then you uh, might do a test fit to see if everything fit actually fits again with this plane not really needed in my case everything fits perfectly but do check it out maybe you have to um, well uh, cut away a little bit to make things fit but um, yeah in this case not really needed then it's time to put our servos into the wings i've got one of the wings here and a couple of minutes ago i told you that it didn't matter which servo which was which and at this point <laughs> it definitely will matter so have a good look at this wing there will be a cavity or a hole over here for your servo wire to go through and as you can hopefully see the servo wire comes out at a certain point at the, of the servo and that uh, that slot is at a certain point and you will simply lead that servo wire through that hole push it through or pull it through from the other side and put the servo in and if you find that um, the servo that you picked will ha uh, has the servo arm <laughs> pointing down at this point you've picked the wrong servo simply take the, the other servo and it'll work itself out and um, yeah I by chance I picked the right servo and also you will see that the servo arm actually fits in this cavity over here for the servo arm so let me see I will be gluing in the servo will I actually let's have a look I must say that it fits in quite tightly but yeah there's uh, you should use some kind of uh, glue to uh, put the servo in place and what kind of glue I'd say hot glue is a good option that you pour would work CA glue would work and you'll only need a little bit again it's a tight fit so uh, the mechanical uh, fit is already pretty good but add a little bit of glue to keep the servo in place and that goes for both of the servos obviously for both of the wings all right, I got my servos in my wings and again I used a little bit of glue only on the sides basically, on the inner sides of the foam to uh, add some mechanical uh, grip for the servos uh, to, uh, but you can hopefully see that the, the fit is very tight in these uh, wings. There is already a lot of uh, grip for these, uh, for these servos. That's nice of course. Then on the other side at the bottom of the wings you can see that there's a groove in the wing for your servo wire and you can simply press it into that groove pretty simple and um, do you need to do anything else to that groove maybe seal it up with some tape you could but definitely not need it as you can uh, hopefully see the entire servo wire disappears into that groove yeah I will be um, sealing up this hole for instance over here uh, with a little bit of tape to make uh, the, wing, the wing a little more slippery for the air hopefully you can also see that uh, it would be very hard to put uh, the servo wire into the wing and into the fuselage then if we start, had started out by gluing the wings to the fuselage right so yeah that's why we picked the order that we picked and we'll leave the control horn which will go over here and the control arm to one of the last pieces when we have uh, everything installed the electronics and such so uh, yeah leave that f as is for now then it is now time to glue the wings to the fuselage finally we'll make the, the airplane look like an actual airplane and it won't hurt to uh, do a final test fit to see for instance if the wing spar actually fits into the wings and uh, you probably already have uh, test fitted the wings into the fuselage that should be good then um, you could up to first glue on the wing tips uh, depends on what you think is more convenient I'll uh, do this uh, the wing tips at the, as a one of the last things so what you need to do is the fuselage has a cavity or a hole over here just in front of the where the wing spar slots into 
the fuselage and that hole over, over here corresponds with the servo lead. Ah, cheeky day. Oh, first slot the wing spar into the wing like so and then again slot that servo lead into the fuselage. Now I will say that it's uh, far more convenient to use a glue that doesn't set quickly because uh, you'll be uh, handling that wire while fitting in and making sure that uh, the servo lead doesn't uh, get pinched in between the wing and the fuselage. Actually it looks to be it looks like that sh should work out pretty easily, as you can hopefully see, right? But still, you'll need at least two hands, so a uh, glue that doesn't set all too quickly, like the glue I'm using here, but from the looks of it, hot glue for instance would work out well too. So again, not a liberal amount of glue, just a thin layer should do the job. And uh, I'll do that off screen, the camera is in the way and I do, do want to have a good joint, obviously. So it is now time to put an actual motor onto our airplane. I can assure you it'll fly a lot better <laughs> with a motor, so let's mount one. And here's the motor I'll be using, this is a Mamma 2207.5 2450 kV motor. Uh, with that motor I can fly the airplane uh, on 3S and on 4S, depending on the propeller I uh, mount. And the kit comes with this mounting cross, glass fiber mounting cross. I've uh, mounted that to the motor with two screws over here. Be sure to use screws that aren't too, too long. Usually these quadcopter motors, these multi-rotor motors uh, come with screws and those will be too long as this mounting cross is pretty thin, right? Usually you'd uh, mount a motor like this on a, a quadcopter arm, which is five-ish millimeters thick. This one, uh, this cross is far thinner. So again, the, the screws that come with these motors are generally too long. Make sure that the screws you use don't protrude uh, beyond the, the base of the motor. And uh, again, uh, I've used two, uh, two screws, more than enough. Then the kit also comes with this shim, plastic shim. And it might look symmetrical, but it isn't. And I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but on your left, the shim is far thinner than on your right. So with this shim, you can offset the motor. So it'll point towards the right, more or less. And if you run a propeller that's clockwise, so when the motor will be spinning clockwise like so, you want that shim to point your motor to the right when we, uh, while we look at the plane from the back, right? So the motor, I'm exaggerating things here, but the motor will be pointing that away, like so. And that'll counter the torque of the motor especially on startup. Now I must say that I generally don't do this when I build planes myself, but uh, it will make it easier to launch the plane. Yeah, I'm not sure what to think, but um, they, uh, I'm sure they test flew, flew the plane with and without. And also if you do install a flight controller into this airplane, then don't use this shim. Then the flight controller itself should um, remedy things, if you will. Uh, again, this will make it, especially on launch, easier to fly the plane. Now, the plane uh, comes, or the kit comes with uh, several screws and you'll find one bag with four screws and those will be uh, used to mount this assembly onto the back over here. You'll be mounting uh, the, the motor with the wires coming off at the top and first lead those into the fuselage and then screw things onto the back of your aeroplane. Pretty simple right, four screws and uh, then you'll have the motor wires tucked into the fuselage. There you have it, we have got ourselves a color matched motor onto the back of our airplane and in case you find that the screws are hard to drive into the plastic, yeah, uh, they are supposed to hold the motor well in place, right? So, uh, but you do have the right screws. It'll take a little bit of effort, but they'll fit. 
don't worry, just keep at it. And uh, what more can I say? Yeah, motor in place. Let's turn our attention to the installation of the ESC and the receiver to, well, see if the servos work and our motor work. Let's see what that's about. Alrighty guys, looking into the fuselage here, we see a couple of wires. We see our two servo leads coming out of the wings, basically. We see three wires from the motor, and as you can tell, I've uh, soldered up some bullet connectors. And we see this here wire, which is from the LEDs. This uh, frame kit, this uh, airplane kit is uh, supplied with LEDs, which is nice. So let's see what we can do. We've got an uh, ESC over here, which has corresponding uh, bullet connectors, in my case. So we can hook that up to our motor. Simple. And if you find that your motor spins the wrong way around, so again, looking from the back of the airplane, we want our propeller to spin clockwise. If you find that the motor spins counterclockwise, just swap out two of these connectors. So simply pull them apart and swap out two. Or let me actually show you. I'm gonna pull these apart and these apart. And then now red is on red where first black was on red. Hopefully that makes sense. Now the motor will spin the other way around when, uh, than what it was spinning around before. Okay, so let's install our receiver. I've got a do-it-yourself receiver over here. And what I always do is uh, set up the left Elevon, so the left servo, to channel 1. And that's this lead over here. So that's channel 1 in my case. You don't have to, but uh, well makes sense for me and it works so uh, <laughs> again channel one and then the other servo on our other wing the right wing channel two and i think a lot of radios set things up per default like this if you uh, for instance in my radio uh, choose an uh, a flying wing pre-mixed model this is the way it's set up so okay let's actually hook up a lipo I'm not sure if you were able to hear the three beeps from the ESC, but I now have a 3S battery connected. And let's see if our servos move. Not sure if you'll be able to see them actually, but you'll probably hear them. And yeah, okay, I do have to change my mixing a little from the looks of it, but that's uh, no biggie. And my motor also spins. That is marvelous. So we are pretty far by now, actually. So what shall we do next? Let's install the mechanical links from the servos to our uh, flight surfaces, our elevons. All right, guys, for our control surface, the airplane comes with two of these control horns, which we'll uh, g glue into here. Well, glue, you don't have to glue them, but I will glue them just for a little bit of extra security. You get these clips, which will go on the bottom. They'll clip onto uh, this, the control horn. And we got the control rod, these. And I must say, things are pretty easy with this airplane. As you can tell, the control rod is ready made and uh, of a specific length. There's no adjustability here, but you could pinch them, I guess. This triangle here. If the control rod ends up being too long, you could pinch it maybe, but shouldn't be uh, necessary. Okay, so, and these control horns, hopefully you can see that they have holes in them. And they are of different sizes. We've got three two millimeter holes and one one and a half millimeter hole. And that's the one we'll use. See this control rod is approximately one and a half millimeter. So we'll slot that into this hole. And yeah, or, uh, normally you'd be able to pick between the holes, but uh, I guess this <laughs> does make things easier. There's no picking and choosing. However, you can pick what, which hole on the servo arm you, you take. And the further out the hole is that you pick, the more leverage or the, the bigger the throws of your elephant will be. 
Um, also, it'll make the plane more touchy, right? So what I'll do is I'll take the second hole from the top over here and I'll stick this control rod through there. You don't have to uh, enlarge the hole. The holes in the servo arm are already of the correct size. Now obviously you want to do this exactly the same on the other side of your airplane, right? Especially your elevator would not be happy if you don't. So let's see if this is correct. Yeah, okay. So what you uh, might want to do is glue in this control horn first or slot it in. But then it would be impossible to get this control arm, this control rod into the hole. This Z. This Z band, you wouldn't be able to get it in. So first put that Z band through your control horn. And again, I will be gluing this in. Just again, for a little bit of uh, extra security. A little more extra grip. I don't think it'll be damn needed. But I do like <laughs> that extra bit of security. I have had these control horns rip out of my wings. Not often, but I've had it happen, so uh, yeah. I will be using a little bit of glue, and then you uh, simply slot this bracket onto the bottom and uh, that'll secure the place. Basically, this will act as a zip tie construction. You'll see if you have this plane. Works pretty well. So let's recheck things and see if our control services work or bind up or anything. There you go. So this for me is elevator up, elevator down, left aileron, right aileron. I must admit that I find the deflections pretty big. But I don't hear the servos buzzing, so the throw seem okay. Um, and also elevator up, correct, elevator down, correct, right aileron, left aileron. So that's all good, I don't have to reverse channels. If uh, you find that uh, something moves the other way around, uh, you'll have to uh, reverse some channels. But again, for me this works. Still, this throw is quite enormous. Might be what you're looking for, a very sporty agile plane but pretty big <laughs> yeah and you can remedy that by uh, using a hole on your servo arm closer to the center or to the spline of your servo so if i move this this z band down on the servo arm the throws will become smaller just so you know also at this point you should check if i if you need to uh, do some trimming and what I always do is uh, check whether these surfaces align, the, the elbow itself and the, the part of the wing over here, if these align in this, and it actually looks and feels pretty, pretty nice. Some people will tell you to uh, use some reflex, in other words, have the elevons move up a little bit. Yeah, that will make launching the plane a little easier, but then in flight, You'll always have a little bit of up. Okay, um, I'm not sure. I don't really like it. I don't like that extra drag. But again, it will make launching the plane a little bit easier. You could try it. Um, yeah, see for yourself. I never do. Um, I always make sure that the surfaces are aligned precisely, and they seem to be yeah pretty nice. Not bad at all. So. Um, Okay, uh, that looks pretty nice. Again, uh, also at this point check if your motor spins the right way around. In my case it doesn't, so I'll reverse things. And um, yeah, you'll have to, you want to, to your motor to spin clockwise. Uh, okay, I'm repeating myself, aren't I? Okay, what more can I tell you? Uh, well, let's see how we fit things in the fuselage. Uh, one more thing to fit actually, and that's the lipo. And well, uh, maybe we want, we want to secure down the ESC and such. Let's see how we do that.
Alrighty, this is what I've ended up with so far. Obviously I don't have an FV setup in it yet, so I have a lot of spare room. I have my ESC over here and it's not even tucked down at all. It's simply, uh, well, uh, friction fitted in place. I could use the Velcro for that. Or I could use this piece of uh, wood that uh, was supplied with the plane uh, to uh, act as a mounting platform, right? And speaking of, I've got the battery over here, which is actually on a mounting platform. That was again supplied with the kit. Right, I, I can move that around. As you can see, the, these plates are uh, screwed in place. Very convenient and I again could uh, mount this thing somewhere for the ESC even though it, it'll be uh, held in place uh, by friction uh, like this. This should work. I've got my receiver at the rear under this uh, cooling vent, cooling uh, outlet if you will. And I've got my wires tucked in over there as well. Be mindful that you leave a little bit of gap for the airflow, for the cooling airflow, right? You don't want to budge this up completely, preventing all airflow uh, to, uh, to these vents over here. I've got my antenna over here, as you can tell. I uh, will probably put a piece of uh, tape over these antenna, but they won't get caught by the propeller at the rear, of course. So what more can I tell you? Yeah, with a 1600, no, an 1800, an 1800 4S, uh, I can balance out the plane and I shoot, even though the, I don't have the added weight of the FAV setup. This should work. It's a bit of a big lipo for a small little plane. I will try uh, to uh, balance it out with a slightly smaller lipo probably. And the, the wing does have markers at the bottom. I uh, hope you'll be able to see them over here. So what you do is, uh, I'll show that uh, in the flight videos uh, actually, but uh, you balance the plane on your the fingertips on these uh, markers and then the, sh the nose of the airplane should slightly tilt downwards but uh, the plane should basically be balanced out if you uh, uh, hold the plane on your fingertips on these balancing points. Now there's a couple things uh, to do still. I need to glue these uh, wing tips in and I've waited for that, for that uh, because you're moving the plane around uh, building uh, things and you might knock these off otherwise or damage them. So uh, that's one of the last things I want to do and obviously add a propeller. And that is basically it. It's uh, more or less ready for a main flight. Um, yeah, weather permitting, I'll uh, be posting a, a flight uh, or several flight videos uh, with this airplane in the near future. Maybe you are left with questions after this uh, how to build an FPV wing. Let me know in the comment section below, obviously. And maybe it would be a good idea for me to do a video on how to set up an uh, OpenTX radio for a wing like this. Let me know in the comment section below if you struggle with that. Or if, if you don't even know where to start. Again, let me know in the comment section below and I'll look into that for now. I hope this uh, video was helpful. Catch you on the next video. Bye bye.